All right, good morning. Happy Friday. It is January 12th. Uh, we've got a little bit of news left that's going to be coming out here today. In just a few minutes, five minutes, we have Corp PMI or PPI, excuse me. Um, but looking, we're still, you know, dollar is still consolidated in this uh, equilibrium of this dealing range. Um, this is a daily time frame. Uh, NQ is still, you know, it's showing strength, still bullish, um, still bullish on all these, um, especially when you drop down to an hourly, you can see a dollar would come up or into the SIBI here. Um, for NQ, ES, and YM, we've all come down into their busies. And uh, when I look at these highs here with over here, pretty clean equal highs. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if price still, um, it'd be nice if it could actually pull back a little bit more. Just dig in just a, I mean, if we look at this big candle and the consequent encroachment of it, it's about right here. So um, actually, let's just see if I can get that more accurate. There to there. Okay, there we go. So it'd be nice to see it actually come down, which lines up with this uh, bullish order block, and then have it come up and attack these uh these equal highs that we're seeing here. So <clears throat> still leaning bullish. That's uh my plan for this Friday. All right, so this is a post trade day video for me and the end of the week. So basically, what what happened is um, I ended up taking a one trade that was counter trend, and uh, I did it for good reason, just seeing what dollar was doing, and then um, also recognizing a little bit of a pattern. Um, but so you know, basically, we made we made equal highs here, and so. And that was at uh, 950. So that's the beginning of that um, 950 to 1010 macro, right? So we went up, we made an equal high. And then what did we do? Um, and I think it was, was I on a three minute chart when I did this initially. Yeah, I think it was. I was on a three minute chart. And so what had happened is, like you can see on the three minute, there's there's the only fair value gap is right here. And so when this candle drove down past it and closed, completely closing in that, this is a good displacement candle. Now, do we have a market structure shift, all that kind of stuff? No, I wasn't looking for that. I was just looking for the displacement. And since it closed it in and I was a little slow to react, so I did hesitate, uh, but I sold um, here at like the 75 level. It's hard to see it with the color scheme here, sorry. But it's uh, like right here, I sold um, and I was hoping price would actually come down into this breaker, um, like one pass. Um, and so as it was coming down and then it started to uh, slow its roll, I moved my stop loss and I, I got out here at 64. So I got 11, 11 points. So I wanted a little bit more, but um, I got a little a little spooked out and you know you can see what price did is it just came up into the fair value gap that was left this was like this continued the displacement breaking structure so um and then if i would have used which i didn't do this part but this is just kind of you know takeaways from the day lessons to learn is what we what did price do in this run from this high to this low it came in uh into this fair value gap just above the 50 percent um, and actually, let's put the OTE on that bad boy. Again, none of this was used for my trade entry that I did take. Yeah, look, came right up to the 60, 62% retracement. And then um, worked its way down to that to the breaker. Um, and this breaker was on a five-minute chart, but I, I, drew, I drew this out. So anyway, um, but I'll tell you, uh, this... I was tempted up in here to go long and 
the thing that prevented me from doing it is realizing the gems that ICT has left behind um, in plain sight that he has said multiple times that I have just plainly ignored and not been patient enough to wait for. And that is premium and discount. So this is the dealing range from this morning. So the, the post uh, London low and then the run up and not to mention it just left behind some, some business that needed to be addressed. Um, and so I patiently waited. And then as I was seeing like, Oh, what, what lines up with this breaker, the OTE, the 70 uh, percent retracement. So there were so many great things that was uh, being identified here to wait. And so I got into a long here and uh, we'll drop down to the one minute. And I actually have a video of this. I can roll a little, but I just, the stills are kind of easier to, to walk through. So what, what, what had happened is we took liquidity and then here's this, this one fair value gap. Like, yes, there's one up here. So technically there was one even higher, but um, for the immediate one after the liquidity grab, this can this candle blows right past it. So this con uh, converts this fair value gap into uh, an inverted fair value gap. And so that's why it's orange. And I put the consequent encroachment line on there. And so what did we have happen after it closed? Price came down. Um, and I took this trade right here, by the way. I did not wait for it to come down. I just took it with this explosive move here. But it made me feel good when I saw what happened. Price came down and it it just respected the, the CE here. And then the next candle opened, it went down a little bit more. And then when it closed, it like just bodies plainly um, respected that. And then price went higher. It came down. Uh, this became a propulsion block because when you look at the last down candle, this came down into it, but totally respected it. It did not go down to even the 50% of the body. And so um, as price went higher and and the propulsion blocked away, this, this candle, when it dipped down, it respected this candles. It did not get into 50% of this candle. And so, you know, this made me feel good as well. And so um, my entry, you know, being here, I was going for 40 points. I had some other draws on liquidity just based on this move down that looked like pretty clean, clean levels. And, you know, um, one thing that I've struggled with in the past is when I've seen these levels, um, if my profit target was close to it, a lot of times I'd push it out to like, yeah, let's squeeze it out. Now, in hindsight, this one, it would have worked. But I can tell you, I have suffered through many a times where it just fails to come up to it. And then it pulls back and I got to suffer all of that emotional capital of it pulling back and, you know, just weathering that pullback and then to maybe still have it come, but in some cases just stop me out. So, um, I'm really glad that I was disciplined to just take my 40, my draw on liquidity was correct. Um, this was also a five minute fair value gap, this orange box. And so once we broke, through this, that turned it into an inverted fair value gap. And you can see the, the if you just eyeball the middle of that, um, the bodies all fully respected that didn't, uh, while we dipped a little bit further into it, that was just into the propulsion block. And so I was, I was really, it made me, once I saw this happen and then I saw this candle come up, I'm like, I am, I, I was feeling very confident and I'm just not at the point. This would have been a great place if I was at a point of adding to my positions but I'm, I'm just not there yet. Um, I just need to make sure I'm correcting the mistakes of 2023 and uh, hopefully seeing better results. And so anyway, that was uh, the trade, two trades that I took. I also took a, another trade in um, oil. And this trade, just, just so you guys know and feel free to laugh at me, um, I am running a robot on this one. Um, so it's a totally different setup and and, but I'm just, I'm using minimal risk and I'm just letting it run and kind of going to compare my trading results against the robot. Not that I plan on like changing and only use the robot, but just, just to have another counter thing that's trading that I don't really have to focus on much. Um, I do look at it once a trade executes, but anyway, that's not the point of this video. Sorry. But so I'm, I'm happy with where things stand. Um, I took one trade. But um, I took one trade in my PA account, 
which is in drawdown, but I'm getting closer to the at least uh, being uh, only a thousand dollars in drawdown. Um, once I get this above 24, 24,000, that'll make me feel happy and just want to keep, you know, doing slow and steady incremental improvements. Uh, but then in this in this account, that's where I took the two trades, um, taking that counter short that I already identified, um, and then taking the same the same trade here, also in this account. So um, all three of these accounts now, these newer 25k accounts, that once I first got them with Apex, they uh, I right away went into drawdown. Um, but I've been really diligent just to keep my risk small one contract and I'm, I'm not going to be increasing to two contracts until I hit a certain profit target and um, that I don't have in stone just yet I'm, I'm toying with the idea of adding another micro contract once I get to $500 in profit just to hopefully start to um, snowball and speed up the process but do it methodically and smartly you know so that if if I drop below 500, I got to go right back to one contract. I, I know ICT teaches $2,000 of profits, and that's, you know, there's there's reasons for that, I'm sure, because of the, the particular uh, account size that his son is trading. But anyway, that's uh, that's just another separate thing. But that's just be talking about kind of my future plans. Um, but the, uh, you know, there was... To, to now have all three of these new PA or eval accounts um, be now above their starting balance makes me feel good. You know, this one I've gone to drawdown. This one got up as high as I think $180 in profit. So I, I am in drawdown on this one, but at least I'm above the starting balance of when I signed up for it. And, uh, you know, quick note on that, you know, I'm, I guess I'm an Apex affiliate, um, but here's the thing. There's a lot of companies out there they're all offering lots of different, um, you know, sales and um, account sizes. But I really think you need to slow down and do the math. <laughs> if you look at the the companies, and so if there's another one besides Apex, by all means, take a closer look at them. But I know there's a lot of other ones that don't, they don't offer a smaller account, like a 25K account. But if you look at Apex website, and if you check out my link in the description, or I'll have a link popping up here above my head at least just take a look at their website look at their their accounts and really do the math because trading is all about math right math and probabilities if you do their 25k account the drawdown and the profit target is the same it's fifteen hundred dollars but now once you start increasing the account size so if you go to then a fifty thousand dollar account well now your drawdown is twenty five hundred and your profit target is 3,000. So now they're not one-to-one. -one. They're pretty close, but they're not one-to-one. -one. And then as you go up on contract, um, in, in account sizes, like a 75 or 100K, like the 100K, the drawdown is 3,000, but the profit target is 6,000. So now you, you're, you're dealing with less um, to hit your profit target. Like there is, the, it, the screws are getting tight. And it's just, it makes it more challenging. And I get it, like with a, an account, like a 100K account, you can trade a lot more contracts ultimately. So, you know, if, you're, if your eye is on the prize of the future, that like, you know, once you pass, you know, you're going to have access to more contracts. I, I get that. That's, a, that's an argument to still do that. But with the 25K account, you can still trade up to 40 micros or four minis. And um, just that bar is so much lower. So anyway... Uh, I, that's why I've switched. I had some 50K accounts that I blew, and since doing so and really realizing the math for me is pretty clear that the 25K accounts are really a sweet spot. Um, and first of all, it costs you the least amount every month, and the profit target is the lowest. And since they allow you to have up to 20 accounts, it's like ultimately as I start passing these um, and I get funded, then... Um, you know, my goal is to, at this point, just stay with these four accounts until I get them all funded and not add any more accounts until I make profits with my funded accounts that warrant me buying more accounts. Um, but at this point with four, you know, if I can get all these passed and I'm able to trade all four accounts, uh, then with like a trade copier, if, you know, if a, a trade day like today, um, taking these trades instead of it being eighty dollars, it would be three hundred and twenty dollars just using one contract. 
Um, so there's a, uh, you know, and then obviously as I'm growing it and I have a buffer, you know, I'll be able to trade two, three, four micros. And then that number just uh, gets, gets larger, but it's, um, it all is with the least amount of risk to start with. So anyway, this wasn't intending to turn this into an apex pitch, but um, not to mention their sale isn't that fantastic right now. It's uh, 71% off, but it's still better than nothing. Still, you can still get a 25k account pretty cheap. So, but they pretty often, pretty, pretty frequently offer 80% off sales. So you might even just want to wait. But if you're just really itching and you need to get an account, well, then check them out. Use my code. Um, I would appreciate it. But anyway, traders, I hope that, uh, again, I say this, and you're going to hear me say it probably on every video, but I hope that whatever your 2023 trading was like, and I'm sure there's traders that, that are, that are you know, doing good and they're, they're happy with their progress, but everyone can always make improvements. So I hope that you've all taken time to um, catalog the lessons of 2023 Figure out what errors can be eliminated um, that can help improve your results for 2024. I know I have done that, uh, and I will have to continue to do that. But it's just um, trading feels different. Um, it doesn't feel as stressful right now. And I know I'm not naive to think that the stresses are just going to go away. Um, I know that that little that little over trading monster will always live inside of me, and I just have to keep him uh, in shackles and chains, and uh, you know keep him uh, pinned down. But um, the 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 it's just so obvious my errors of 2023 that I'm expecting to see a, a much different result in 2024 just by eliminating the obvious mistakes. Obviously, I have a lot more to learn. Um, and improve upon, but just by limiting those mistakes, I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be good going forward. So, um, and let's just roll this little quick video. I'll just step through it real fast. But yeah, so this was, this was the trade that I got into after we closed out that one minute fair value gap. Once we closed, I entered long and we'll just skip through it fast. Um, I mean, that's me highlighting that, uh, propulsion block because we came down Oh, sorry, I'm changing colors here. <laughs> but the uh, this candle came down, respected this uh, bullish order block. So this takes over, um, and uh, you know price does just that. It pro pro propels away from it. Um, and I'll just keep skipping forward. If we do a little dig back into that propulsion block, it still holds, and then. Uh, Price just keeps on trucking and nearing my target. And there we go. Just hit it. And this was the draw. So anyway, it was a great, great end of the week trading for myself. And as always, traders, I hope that you are taking more from the market than it's taking from you. May the ticks be forever in your favor. Peace out.